I'm Mike Mack. I'm a cardiac surgeon in Dallas, Texas. I'm the director of cardiovascular surgery and cardiology for the Baylor Healthcare System uh, in Dallas. Uh, and I practice at the Heart Hospital Baylor Plano. My practice is limited totally to heart valve disease. So I perform about 70% of the procedures are aortic valve procedures and about 30% mitral uh, in a year's period of time and I do about 200 cases a year. Hi everybody, it's Adam with heartvalvesurgery.com. I'm thrilled to be with Dr. Michael Mack. And Dr. Mack, can you share with us what attracted you to cardiac surgery? So I think that I, when I was a young, impressionable teenager, uh, heart surgeons were featured on the cover of Life and Time magazine. I can still remember uh, Dr. DeBakey and Dr. Cooley uh, being larger than life of being on the front pages of the newsstands. You know, I, it was what my first attraction to it was, and I said, I want to be like those guys. Dr. Mack, what is TAVI? If you're outside the United States and Europe, it's called TAVI, which is transcatheter aortic valve implantation. In the United States, it's TAVR, which is transcatheter aortic valve replacement. And what that means is putting in heart valves, heart valves without traditional surgery. So using x-ray guidance and echo guidance, you can put a heart valve in threading it up from an artery in the leg or going through the tip of the heart or a couple of other different approaches without ever stopping the heart and without ever making a large incision. What are the advantages of having a TAVI or a TAVR procedure? So from a patient perspective, you always want the less invasive procedure if you know it's equally as good. So you can get through a procedure quicker, easier, less recovery time, but you have to be sure that the long-term results are roughly equal from that. So all other things being equal, the attraction to TAVR is it's a less invasive procedure than surgery. What you have to look at is what's the price or the cost of that in terms of what are the added complications, what are you giving up, does it last as long, is it worth having the less invasive procedure simply to recover quickly? You just mentioned the potential risks of a TAVI procedure. Can you share what those risks may be? Well, first of all, there's a couple of types of patients or patient categories who are candidates for TAVR. And first are what's called inoperable patients, which are patients who are not candidates for surgery because they're too old, they're too debilitated, they're too frail, or too, have too many other medical conditions that make them too high risk to be able to tolerate a surgical procedure. Compared to the alternative, which is treating with medication, TAVR is the clear-cut choice. The next category of patients are patients who are very high risk for surgery. And again, that was studied in a randomized trial in the United States called the PARTNER trial. That showed that the results of TAVR, in other words, being alive at one year, was the same whether you had surgery or TAVR. So Dr. Mack, in your opinion, what is the most important piece of advice for a patient who's considering having a TAVI or TAVR done? So there's a couple things. Uh, one is, is it an alternative for them? And is it a good alternative for them? The reflex reaction is, just because it's less invasive, I want it. But you have to understand the full repercussions of that. The second thing that you want to know as a patient is, what is the experience with the center performing it? It's still a very new procedure in the United States. Uh, it was approved by the FDA in November of 2011. But you want to be sure that there's good experience in the center and that, uh, that their results uh, are good. What is the future of TAVI, in your opinion? So I think it's clear that the future of TAVI is that more and more patients will be treated with it. And, and the question is, at what rate the adoption of it grows? There are very careful parameters to be sure that the patients that really need it are able to get access to it. Now the innovation pipeline is full of brand new valves. I mean, there's probably another nine or 10 valves that show very promising results in terms of fixing some of the problems, as well as there's a whole lot of ancillary devices that'll make the procedure safer, 
easier to perform quicker and move beyond general anesthesia to local anesthesia. So it's a very bright and promising future, but the term we've used for this is what's called rational dispersion. It'll grow, but in a very rational manner.